Welcome to the New World Order, ladies and gentlemen, where they love you so much they make bacteria that eats viruses and viruses that eat bacteria and nano gremlins that eat viruses and bacteria, all for the safety of you and me and the Illuminati elite that think they control the world. Yeah, that's right. Bacteria eating viruses, the magic bullets, and the war on superbugs. Now, when you take a look at what these things actually look like, check this out. Doesn't this look like something out of a sci-fi movie? These look like nano gremlins, literally created in a lab. But no, it's just natural, totally natural. They're called bacteriophage. Bacteriophage. It is a virus that infects and replicates within a bacterium. The term is derived from bacteria and the Greek phagin to devour. Bacteriophages are composed of proteins and encapsulate a DNA or RNA genome. And as you can see right here, check that out. Doesn't that look like a, a rocket almost with creepy crawly legs? Well, let's go back to that image. And you can see here, I'm going to leave the links to all of these websites for you to look at at your leisure. And there you go, 3D self-replicated. Just print them up on a Petri dish there. And this just gives you more of an idea of the breakdown, how it actually works. Let's, let's get into this for a minute. This thing will ever load. My computer's being kind of slow. goes through about 15 different satellite systems, I'm sure, before it goes to you. Okay, so here you go. You've got the DNA, the tail tube, the long tail fiber. almost thought it said tail lube there. But up up. You've got the base plate, protein needle. Of course, you've got to have the protein needle. Look at these things. They just look so happy, don't they? Feeding off that bacteria. And you've got that beautiful looking DNA on the inside of that sacred geometry. So, what do you think about the actual implementation of these things to fight off bacteria that antibiotics won't be able to touch because of all the antibiotics that have been used? Do you think that these bacteria-eating viruses will actually be a good thing or a bad thing? Bacteriophage. Bacteriophage. Now, they look like something out of the day after tomorrow or the day the earth stood still. I'm, so, I'm sorry. The Resident Evil series, remember the T-virus that was created, turned everybody into zombies? Except for, of course, of course, my favorite actress in the entire world, Mila Jovovich. What about I Am Legend, where they created a virus to kill cancer, and then it turned everybody into zombies? Well, that's okay. We don't have to worry about it anymore. Because we now have nanorobotics, which are so small, they can actually move molecules around. Yeah, literally, moving molecules around that small. You think I'm exaggerating? They're the size of nanometers. A nanometer is one billionth of a meter. That's not much larger than a helium atom. Well, it's about 10 times the width of a helium atom. So here is a molecular propeller, a CGI image. This isn't real, this one. And here's another CGI image of a molecular propeller, basically a bunch of atoms put together. Let's get into the nanometer here. One billionth of a meter. Well, you ever look up after they do a bunch of spraying in the atmosphere, for your pleasure, of course, and see all those nanoparticulates that fall? And you ever wonder if there could be some possible ultra-refined clandestine applications that these nanoparticulates of magnesium, aluminum, combined with who else knows what's in there. Bacteria, they found genetically modified E. coli in there before. Well, where am I going with this? Somatics. You guys ever seen sand thrown on a plate and then... Maybe a Tibetan bowl hit, and you've got that vibrational frequency that causes specific reactions to the sand. Like, look at this right here. Look at how easy this is to change the sand. Certainly, it'd be easier to move things around at a molecular level than at the sand level there. I think that's just incredible. So, 
What if, after the atmosphere gets sprayed constantly with all these nanoparticulates and gets lodged into human beings, well, what if they use the same type of technology on a global scale where they could refine it down to a city block, to a zip code, even to a person based on their biological makeup, their biomark identity, their DNA, literally, and they could rewrite people at a mass scale, a million people, a billion people, 10 people, one person. But that's just a conspiracy, right? Frequency warfare, that's not the 21st century way of doing things. They don't use nanotechnology, do they? Look at this. This is a frictionless nano rotor. Graphene nano engines used to power tiny robots, for example, to attack cancer cells in the body. Oh, yeah, for example, to attack somebody's central nervous system because they aren't playing ball with the Borg. A lab on a chip. Now, graphene, we talked about this yesterday. Literally, atom size, it's atom thickness. And these things are, this specific element is stronger than steel. It's stronger than diamonds. Graphene, they're working on nano skin now nano diamond skin that's solar powered to run prosthetics. Well, what if they merge that with the next human being? I mean, they mix everything else in the DNAs. Why not mix some nanometers in there? Some nano graphene diamond gray goo particulates. Look at this. This is from 2014. The Bellestine Journal that shows total products that label nanoparticulates or nanoparticles or nanoproducts in their products. I said products there twice. I apologize. 2014, 1,814 total products. Over 230 added that year from 2013. We're in 2017 now. Who knows how many products? Could be double that. Look at it. Go back to 2005. There was 54 products. Look at the increase. Because they love us so much, they put nanoparticulates in the food to bypass the blood-brain barrier, go directly into the cerebral cortex and rewrite it. For the Dungeon Masters. Take a look at this. Agriculture, food processing, food packaging, supplements. Delivery of growth hormones in a controlled fashion. Nanosensors for monitoring, for monitoring soil conditions and crop growth. Nanochips to identify. And for preservation and tracking. Animal plant pathogens. Wonderful. They're so small they can detect animal and plant pathogens. Well, let's not even get into the gray goo. Remember the film Day After Tomorrow? You can go back to the original sci-fi book and then the movie and then obviously the one that came out in 2008 with Keanu Reeves. Well, in that film, gray goo is released onto the world. Now, what does that gray goo do? Well, the gray goo self-replicates and is on the verge of destroying the world until Keanu Reeves says, hey, no, we're going we're gonna to let you live. And then the world is kumbaya again because they decide to change. Well, are we going to change or are we just going to keep sucking the Earth's atmosphere dry, pulling the blood of the Earth with the fracking and the nuclear reactors and the poisoning and everything anyway? Well, that's how we learn, I guess. Fire. Learn by fire. Self-replicating machines of the macroscopic variety were originally described by mathematician John von Neumann and are sometimes referred to as Newman machines. Clanking replicators, or this nanotechnology at a molecular level, would take the air or whatever mass was there and rewrite it to make another one of these robots until everything was a robot, these microscopic robots, then they'd start eating each other, and then who knows what would happen. Well, welcome to the singularity. The singularity where machines get faster and smaller exponentially. Take your cell phone and realize that your cell phone is probably about 10 times faster than many of the computers that were available for your home 10 years ago. Microchips, three times the width of a DNA strand. The singularity is probably, probably already here. We're probably already living in the singularity. We're probably already in this holographic holographic construct or matrix and I can't talk today I don't know what's going on must be all these nano goblins nanny 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 welcome 
to the new world order. Okay, so take a look at this. The singularity evolutionary substrate starts off with RNA, then DNA, then cells, then human evolution, then brains, then digital. What if your brain could be downloaded into a computer? What if your consciousness could be downloaded into a machine like the new echoes that are out there where you ask it to turn on your smart TV? It does. You ask it to order you milk. It does. And then your drone shows up on the door three hours later from Amazon. How wonderful, how easy, how convenient. Well, what happens if your consciousness can literally be downloaded into these machines and somebody that doesn't have your best interests at heart gets a hold of your consciousness and downloads it and then takes advantage of it? And what if they decide to make it feel like you're in this box for a thousand years when in reality it's 10 seconds and you can't move, you can't talk, you can't walk, there's no light, there's nothing. They just mess with your sensory perception. Or what if it's like Lawnmower Man where they throw you into the world mainframes and you have complete control of everything. Welcome to the new world order of possibilities. And what about the fun vax? Well, I can tell you this. I saw the supposed briefing at the Pentagon for the fun vax where there were some people saying, yeah, you know, we're going to get rid of these fundamentalists by spraying them with these fun vax nano gremlins essentially that what what it does is it eliminates the god gene they say or a certain part of the brain that is associated with the faith-based mindset and if you look at the actual if you watch the video you're going to see that there's a specific image used for two different people and it's the same image of that person's brain in a cat scan so that person that put the presentation together, there very well may have been a presentation there, but the presentation itself, the person tried to pull a fast one on him because he used the same image for both the person that was a fundamentalist and the person that wasn't, if you catch my drift. But let's think about the possibilities of a fun vax scenario. And certainly the possibilities there. And if you guys have read the articles that have came out about how supposedly NASA admits to spraying lithium in chemtrails, and even Snopes supposedly confirms this. Well, there's a lot of different possibilities out there. So I'm just thinking about the long-term future. Are there going to be these nanoparticulates that are this, the, have the computing power of, for example, this supercomputer that's coming out by IBM that's going to be calculating up to 300 quadrillion floating points per second, yet the size of a nanometer? One billionth of a meter. I don't know. Now, check out our sponsor, GetTheTea.com. I love this stuff. Actually, as a matter of fact, I was saving the best for last. I am going to, while I'm talking to you guys here, I'm going to mix me up some of this stuff and enjoy the flavor. Because I thought, man, this might not be, this might not be very good, right? Because you're thinking, well, it's so good for me and it's got all these different products in there. Well, let's see here. It smells delicious. It smells like chocolate. One big, one big teaspoon here. Let's mix, mix this up really good. It's going to take me a long time to mix it up really good. So while I'm mixing it up, I'm just going to say have a beautiful day. This is my shameless plug, question everything. Get some of these awesome products from Get the Tea. You know, the D365 tabs are amazing. Love them. The Allison Advanced, awesome. Just got these. And then the uh, Essential Bees, I just got these also. Awesome, really good stuff. Be the change you want to see. And you've got that beautiful looking DNA on the inside of that sacred geometry. So, what do you think about the actual implementation of these things to fight off bacteria that antibiotics won't be able to touch because of all the antibiotics that have been used? Do you think that these bacteria-eating viruses will actually be a good thing or a bad thing? Bacteriophage. Here, check that out. Doesn't that look like a, a rocket, almost, with creepy crawly legs? Well, let's go back to that image, and you can see here, I'm going to leave the links to all of these websites for you to look at at your leisure. And there you go, 3D, self-replicated, just print them up on a petri dish there and this just gives you more of an idea of the breakdown how it actually works let's let's get into this for a minute this thing will ever load my computer's being kind of slow it goes through about 15 different 
satellite systems, I'm sure, before it goes to you. Okay, so here you go. You've got the DNA, the tail tube, the long tail fiber. I almost thought it said tail lube there. But up up. You've got the base plate, protein needle. Of course, you got to have the protein needle. Look at these things. They just look so happy, don't they? Feeding off that bacteria. Doesn't this look like something out of a sci-fi movie? These look like nano gremlins, literally created in a lab. But no, it's just natural, totally natural. They're called bacteriophage. Bacteriophage. It is a virus that infects and replicates within a bacterium. The term is derived from bacteria and the Greek phagin to devour. Bacteriophages are composed of proteins and encapsulate a DNA or RNA genome. And as you can see right here, Welcome to the New World Order, ladies and gentlemen, where they love you so much they make bacteria that eats viruses and viruses that eat bacteria and nanogremlins that eat viruses and bacteria, all for the safety of you and me and the Illuminati elite that think they control the world. Yeah, that's right. Bacteria eating viruses, the magic bullets, and the war on superbugs. Now, when you take a look at what these things actually look like, check this out.